Usually when I start a visual novel, I tend to have a good idea which main heroines I like or dislike. There are some rare cases where a heroine has a bad first impression but improves a lot later on. Sadly, there are a decent amount of cases where a heroine either started likable or I read up their personality ahead of time and liked it, but their development by the end of the route just ended up disappointing me. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the top 10 heroines who disappointed me in visual novels. At number 10, I have Christian Friedrich, usually called Chris, and Majikoi Love Me Seriously. So unlike apparently a lot of Majikoi fans, I actually like Chris's base personality a lot. She is a bit overly moralistic, but she mellows out and can be just as fun as the rest of the Kazuma family. The main disappointing thing about her is her development or lack of in her route. The other four main heroines have very sweet or interesting developments that I liked from start to finish. Chris has the unfortunate issue where her first major conflict is solved through rape? Seriously? The content after the rape could have been interesting, but a lot of the way things developed afterwards I just couldn't take seriously. Thankfully, I like Chris outside her route well enough. It's just a shame her development was marred by stupid plot development. At number 9, I have Kasumi Ayase from DS Irei. Kasumi Ayase is a spunky, tomboyish childhood friend really similar to Sumika from the Muv Love series. I liked Kasumi's teasy personality in the common route, as well as how her accidental involvement with the villains led to Ren being involved in the main plot. Sadly, DS Irde in general doesn't really do much with its main romanceable heroines outside Kei Sakurai. I pointed out Kasumi in particular, since I liked her base personality the most, but her route ended up being both the least eventful, and Kasumi herself barely got any development. At number 8, I have Nahoko Jino from Under One Wing. I think Under One Wing, while not a top tier visual novel, is a relatively underrated moege, kinda under the shadow of If My Hearted Wings and Aokana, in terms of similar writing and flight related club stuff. The other three main heroines have solid enough writing and character development in their routes. However, Nahoko is yet another case of her common route based personality being good, before disappointing me. This time, the reason her route was disappointing was how her character turned out. If there's one thing I learned, friends with benefits routes are almost never written well, and Nahoko's just confused me. Unlike other ones I've read, I just have no idea why it turned out the way it did. It's a shame, Nahoko had some potential interesting issues. It's just the way the route turned into friends with benefits and her being a bit sadisty ruined my enjoyment of it. At number 7, I have Yuri Hisaka from Bokuten, Why I Became an Angel. Similar to Chris, I actually like Yuri's base personality a lot. She had some really interesting issues, mostly related to how much of a pushover she was, and Bokuten wasn't exactly shy on going all in on character flaws, so I was interested to see how her development would turn out. Sadly, Yuri happens to have a literal she-devil of a sister, Momo. Momo took edginess to the next level, being an obnoxiously manipulative bitch for her age somehow, and when she started to do a lots of reverse rape, yes you heard me correctly, that's when the route turned from stupid to one of my least favorite routes of all time. Yuri had so much potential, and for her development to be marred by one of the stupidest plot developments I've seen in visual novels really stung a lot. At number 6, I have Reina Kaname from Making Lovers. Making Lovers is one of my favorite slice of life visual novels due to the comedy and adult age romance. When I was looking up character traits ahead of time, Reina seemed to have ones I may like, being friendly, energetic, and mischievous. Sadly, Reina took the mischievous part a bit too far in my eyes, being too aggressive to the point of being kind of an annoying bitch. One of my least favorite scenes in the visual novel is when she made Kazuma crossplay as a girl in front of her school class for fun. It doesn't help she's not an actual adult age lump interest as far as I know, in a visual novel that's advertising adult age and work stuff. Despite Making Lovers being one of my favorite slice of life visual novels, and me quite liking the other four main heroines, Reina's sadly easily my least favorite of the main five, personality wise. At number five, I have Kiri Kikyo from Canvas 2. For some reason, when there's very little moege translated, I have the smart idea of asking an online visual novel fan for the most average visual novel he could think of just for shits and giggles. Canvas 2 itself was not only average, it was mediocre in so many ways. And it doesn't help most of the routes are teacher-student romances which I am NOT a fan of. However, one of the heroines, Kitty, is actually a childhood friend of the protagonist and also a fellow teacher at the same school. Adult age, fellow teacher, and childhood friend sounds like an interesting combination in my eyes. Sadly, Canvas 2 just has some really generic, crappy, unfunny jokes in writing, and Kitty was a victim of those and just had a generally unlikable personality. At number 4, I have Hasumi Tenma from Koikari, Love for Hire. Hasumi is a pretty cheeky weirdo with a really distinct <laughs> 
laugh. Some of her jokes were pretty funny, and her relationship with the main character had a secret side to it that had potential to be interesting. However, even early on, I thought she was a bit too manipulative for my taste, despite some of her jokes and personality being good otherwise. Once we got to Hasumi doing THE REVEAL to both Yuki and Emi, it killed my interest in reading the rest of the visual novel, more specifically, the Hasumi Emi rivalry branch. The way things were revealed and how the drama went was so stupid, and the stuff it started after made me rage quit. It's a shame. I actually liked the earlier branch heroine's routes just fine, Tsubaki's being chill, and the twins' route being hilarious. Hasumi being a weirdo character with an interesting past could have been good, but bringing stupid drama in a generally light-hearted comedic Asa project visual novel was not the right strategy for me. At number 3, I have Yuki Gosho Gawara from Suki Suki, or If You Love Me, Then Say So. Now, I like childhood friends, and if done right, I really like female characters making constant perverted jokes. Miyako Shina from Majikoi and Shina Kisu from Sankaku Renai are two of my all-time favorite visual novel characters, mostly for this reason. However, the way Yuki does it is too repetitive, obnoxious, and outright bitchy. I've complained about visual novel humor, where a heroine does unfair protagonist shaming calling them perverts even when he wasn't doing anything. Yuki does this type of humor arguably worse than any Yuzusoft visual novel, her making the perverted comments on purpose, then pulling the, oh, protagonist replied? Well, you're the pervert card. She tries to play it off as a teehee, I'm just joking, but the fact that she does this constantly makes it too much of a bitch in my eyes. Apparently, Yuki's route is actually pretty good in terms of drama, but I just hated how her humor was done in the common route, so I just did not care to do her route. What a waste of a potentially good childhood friend with perverted humor. Speaking of Yuzusoft, at number two, I have Meguru Inaba from Sanaba or Sabbat of the Witch. If Meguru wasn't hit by so much of the Yuzusoft humor I hate so much, she could have potentially not only been my best Sanoba girl, but also one of my favorite visual novel heroines. I really like her intro in the story, being one of the first clients Nene and Shuji get when they're trying to help other students with their problems. Her development of wanting more friends despite being a gamer has that relatability factor, and her slowly showing more of her energetic side over time was nice to see. Also, in her route, she has some of my favorite heartwarming moments in the whole visual novel, all initiated by Meguru herself. Sadly, all it took was the overuse of three words. As I keep saying, I hate users off humor that makes heroines unfairly and constantly call the protagonist a pervert even when he didn't do anything. Meguru sadly does this the most in Sanoba, and also does this humor the loudest and most annoying, and does it constantly both in Common Route and her route. This overuse is what brought down Meguru to an okay at best heroine, which sucks since as said earlier, her development and moments in her route could have been one of my favorite heroines in visual novels, and I could have been one of those mini Yuzusoft simps that exist. At number one, I have Ageha Himeki from Konosora or If My Heart Had Wings. In the common route, I quite liked Ageha and she was probably my best girl at the time. A tomboy redhead childhood friend who was both an energetic friendly person but also a female bro in terms of helping the main character getting into the glider club? Seems like the perfect transition into interesting romance. So remember earlier for Nahoko from Under One Wing, I do not like how Friends with Benefits routes turn out in visual novels. A lot of that started from Ageha's route, which took the Friends with Benefits thing to an obnoxious level. See, for the vast majority of the route, Ageha does a lot of running away and not properly communicating. Some of it eventually made sense, but at the time, it was frustrating dealing with her as both a love interest and a potential member of the Glider Club. The friends with benefits thing was super annoying, as Aoi, the main character, keeps trying to confess to her, but she keeps avoiding the love issue. But the fact that Ageha clearly gets jealous of her sister Hotaru when she tries to get into the picture, but still being avoided and bad with communicating related to the romance front was frustrating. The route eventually ends with her giving an okay reason for her acting the way she did, I guess, but not enough for me to immediately forgive her. And she never properly apologizes, and in fact becomes kind of a bitch with how much she teases Aoi by purposefully not confessing back in his face. A huge shame, really. One of my potential favorite heroines, 
turning into one of my least favorite heroines and heroine routes in an otherwise great visual novel. And there you have it, the 10 visual novel heroines that most disappointed me. What did you think of any of the visual novel heroines I put on this list? Do you agree or disagree with any of them? Which visual novel heroines personally disappointed you? Feel free to leave a comment below.